yeah let's talk about lexical analyzer first Mm, the main responsibility of lexical analyzer is this is the only phase uh, which actually reads the text character by character which means once this phase is over you will never see uh, the letters i n t or uh, m a x or x or y instead of these every literal this is called lexeme you know in place of every lexeme you are going to see a token so for example int is a token max is a token identifier x x so only at this phase lexical analyzer is going to read line by line and its main responsibilities are one thing is it will eliminate the comments and it will eliminate the white spaces even if you try it as interesting you know work work maybe even if you write the entire c program in one line there will be no errors at all you need not write the c program in many lines without giving any spaces spaces in the sense after the line okay between them you know they you have to uh, between int and max you have to give a space but then after this you need not give any space so if you write a program completely without any spaces then also it works fine right uh, so here coming to this the main responsibility of uh, lexical analyzer is first is converting uh, the lexemes into tokens which means names into tokens that is first one second one is removing the comments third one is removing the white spaces wherever you have given extra white spaces and then Uh, only at this phase since we are reading them character by character we know where what is the line number of each lexeme for example sometimes you will see that uh, at some line number there is a syntax error and this can be done only because the lexical analyzer is actually reading the program line by line otherwise you know it would would, would it would not be possible okay so removing the errors first thing is removing the uh, comments removing the white spaces and third thing is if you get any errors it is going to show up and uh, how how many tokens are there in this program so if you count the number of tokens so int is a token max is a token 1 2 even open brace is a token 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 so so completely there are are 25 tokens in this particular program okay you are not going to count anything of comments as a token that will be completely removed so there are 25 tokens and one more thing is is this a valid declaration int max x comma y and then later it is there is int x comma y outside it they are not actually global variables this declaration is perfectly valid and i suggest that you read that book uh, the C programming language by Dennis Ritchie. That is the best book if you want to learn about uh, programming more, especially C programming more. That is worth reading. Okay. And next one is let us say there is a line like this. How many tokens are there in this particular line? So printf is a token. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You are supposed to get eleven tokens, right? but then there are uh, this this is wrong the reason is the entire the reason is there are there are no only eight tokens in this the reason is the entire string this entire string literal is considered as one token the entire string constant is one token and the remaining things are one token which means one token is printf second token is open brace third token is the string fourth token is comma fifth token is ampersand 6 7 8 therefore only 8 lit 8 uh, tokens are there so some questions in lexical analyzer is what is uh, you know how many tokens are there and what are the responsibilities that is all about lexical analyzer okay let's see about uh, syntax analyzer or parser before going to syntax analyzer the we have to think about grammars so the input to syntax analyzer is a grammar and therefore the syntax analyzer is going to take the grammar see if you have a syntax analyzer you have to give the grammar first and then the input now the input will be checked according to the grammar therefore before going to syntax analyzer let's talk about grammars and uh, the grammars are like this generally the way we represent grammar is grammar is vtps so if you are not good with the grammars or if you have not done uh, automata theory it is better that you watch my automata videos of grammars and then i can come back to this topic and watch it 
you know there i'll be discussing everything at depth here you know i i assume that you have already watched that video so uh, even then i just introduce the basics grammar is v t p s where v is nothing but variables t is terminals p is productions and s is the start symbol example let's take this grammar e derives e derives e plus e e star e id if this is the grammar i have three productions okay so generally this is one of the way to represent three productions you could even write it as e derives e plus e derives e plus e star e derives id this is one of the ways okay now uh, the here the main variables are nothing but the left hand side in the left hand side we have only one symbol therefore the set v contains only one symbol e and the terminals terminals are all the whatever is not there on the left hand side that is generally a terminal so in this grammar the terminal is plus star and id okay so whatever you know uh, the rules these rules are called the productions and the start symbol is you know one of the variable and here we have only one variable therefore start symbol is e itself so next thing is once we have considered this entire grammar uh, what is the output what are what is the main purpose of the grammar is it they will generate all these strings for example if i want to generate this string id plus id star id if i want to derive this string from this grammar okay so it will look like this e derives e plus e and then either you could use replace this c first or this c first with any of the variables this is called derivation i am going to do the derivation and in this derivation you could derive the first variable in the expression or the second variable in the expression or in any order if i go in the leftmost variable first then it is called leftmost derivation let me show you leftmost derivation okay leftmost derivation means i have two variables and i am taking the leftmost one leftmost one is the first e so how can i you know write it this one is going to be replaced with id id plus e and now the second variable e this one this one has to be expanded using any of the productions so the right production is e star e therefore i am going to expand id plus e star e this e is replaced with e now again we have two e's so which one do you want to replace the leftmost one why because we are doing the leftmost derivation okay now what do i get id plus id star e and finally the last one id plus id star id now for the same for the same grammar for the same string this is leftmost derivation what we did now if i want to do the rightmost derivation rightmost derivation means at every point we are going to replace the rightmost variable first so e derives e plus e and now what is the rightmost variable the rightmost e what do you want to replace it with you cannot replace with id you have to replace with e star e now how many variables are there three variables again you replace the rightmost one first e plus e star id and what is the rightmost one the second e e plus id star id and again the last one id plus id star id therefore this is the leftmost derivation and this is the rightmost derivation okay now uh, my question is is this the only leftmost derivation possible or is there any other leftmost derivation possible let's see this can i derive the same string using leftmost derivation using the same grammar in a different way let's just see this e derives e what if i take e star e first can i still derive this string it turns out that we could okay i'll take the leftmost one e plus e star e this leftmost one is replaced with e plus e this production leftmost one and again the leftmost symbol is replaced with id and next again the leftmost variable is again replaced with id and again the leftmost one is replaced with id okay and next one is rmd is there one more rmd you know possible it turns out that yes we could do one more rmd also e derives 
e star e and now the e derives e star i d and now first e derives e plus e star i d and again the rightmost e is again going to be derived with i d and again the rightmost one which is only one i d plus i d star i d therefore we have again derived it okay so next question is parse tree instead of deriving it using the derivation procedure can we derive it using the parse tree procedure which means parsing the uh, parsing the grammar like this e derives e plus e and this e derives e star e id id and id this is one parse tree and one more parse tree possible is e derives e star e and then this first e derives e plus e therefore this e derives id id and id so if you observe this this grammar for a given grammar for a given string for a given grammar for a given string we got more than one leftmost derivation and we got more than one rightmost derivation and we got more than one parse tree right either we get more than one lmd or more than one rmd which means rightmost derivation or more than one parse tree then we can say that the grammar is ambiguous ambiguous in the sense if we have two parse trees possible generally parsers will get confused about which one to generate or which is right okay so in these two parse trees even though the output is no showing it to be the required string the evaluation is different for example if i have if i have any input let us say 2 3 4 which means if i have any input like 2 plus 3 into 4 the output is supposed to be 14 isn't it output is supposed to be 3 into 4 is 12 12 plus 2 is 14 now if i use this tree what is the output that is resulting and if i use this tree what is the output that is resulting just see this now this id is going to be 2 this id is going to be 3 this id is going to be 4 then the first one this e is nothing but the sum of this expression and the sum of the next expression if i have to evaluate this expression first i need the value of this expression which means i have to evaluate this one first therefore according to this pass tree the first one which is going to be evaluated is uh, multiplication and then the next one is uh, addition therefore according to this pass tree the right answer no the this is the right answer no this is right which will give the answer of 14 if you use the other pass tree instead which means this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 in order to evaluate this expression you have to evaluate this expression in order to evaluate this expression you have to evaluate this expression first this is right you know readily available you need not evaluate anything but this expression you have to evaluate first which means 2 plus 3 is added and then multiplied with 4 so therefore here it is going to be 20 this one is going to give you 20 and this one is going to give you 14 so which is right therefore uh, parser the confusion with parser is when you have more than one parse tree parser doesn't know which parse tree to use so uh, most of the parsers almost every parser except one parser we shall see it later will not allow uh, ambiguous grammars if there is any ambiguity in the grammar we have to convert it into unambiguous grammars there are two questions here how to find out a grammar is ambiguous there are no algorithms you have to do it hit and try way second question is how to convert a ambiguous grammar to unambiguous grammar again there are no algorithms okay so we cannot know whether a grammar is ambiguous or unambiguous using a no direct procedure you need practice and then you have to do such methods what take a string and then check whether we generate two or more parse trees if you get two or more parse trees or if you get more than one lmd or if you get more than one rmd then the grammar is ambiguous in these lectures i am going to follow the method of parse trees so in order to find out whether a grammar is ambiguous or not i'll take the grammar and i'll write i'll take a string and then i'll see if i get more than one parse tree or not okay let's see some examples to find out whether the grammars are ambiguous or not let's see three more examples whether you know whether the given grammar is ambiguous or not the given grammar is as derives as sa or a so in order to find out whether it is an ambiguous grammar or not there are no algorithms which means ambiguity problem is undecidable we don't have any algorithm for that 
so only one thing is you have to try and see all possible strings a grammar is said to be ambiguous if for any string which is derived from this grammar we get more than one pass tree so for example if given this grammar tell me string which is generated by this i am guessing that this string aa might give me more than one pass tree how do i know it i am just guessing it there are no direct methods okay so as the rise i'm just trying whether we get more than one pass tree or not this is one pass tree and as the rise yes say and this is one pass tree yes we got two pass trees for the same string from the same grammar therefore we can say that the grammar is ambiguous the grammar is ambiguous you can even try with uh, two lmds or two rmds but then maybe you might have to try with a different string yeah so next one is uh, whether this grammar is ambiguous or not for that you have to again do the same method what is the method guess the string some string any string and then see if you could find more than two pass trees if you, if you are lucky you will find it for a small string otherwise you have to keep on doing that is why there are no algorithms okay so the word is let us say a b a b if this is the word which we want to generate from this grammar let me see if you get more than one pass tree so one is as the rise a yes b yes and now this one this second this has the rise b s a yes and this one is epsilon this one is epsilon this one is epsilon when you have such a big pass tree sometimes you might get confused about what is the output of the pass tree now that is also called as yield of the pass tree for that method you know you have to traverse the tree top to down left to right while traversing the tree whenever you come across any terminal you write it down then you will find out what is the generate what is the string generated by this traverse it top to down left to right which means like this what is that you have, you have encountered first a and then b and then again a and then epsilon i am not writing it because epsilon is not going to be any value and then again b okay so therefore that is a b a b right so let's see if you get one more pass tree just just let's try as the rise a s b s and let let us expand the second s first here i expanded the first s here i am expanding the second s i am expanding the second s with again a s b s and this s with epsilon epsilon and epsilon now just see the yield of this yield of this is first you encounter a therefore output of this is a and then you encounter epsilon so don't write it and then you encounter b b and then you encounter a yes and then you encounter epsilon leave it and then you encounter b therefore output is a b a b so for the given grammar for a given string we got more than one pass tree therefore again this is ambiguous okay so let's look at the this example so what is this example uh, r plus r r r r star it is nothing but a grammar which is representing all uh, all regular expressions for example this uh, r derives r plus r is nothing but a regular expression can be union of two regular expressions or concatenation of two regular expressions or a clean closure of a regular expression and a regular expression can be either a or b or c they are primitive regular expressions right so how do i get more than one pass tree it is same you know maybe if you want to generate a plus b into c like how you generated it for a plus b into c there a plus b concatenated with c i get two pass trees you know we have already seen such a model r r b c and then a here uh, this concatenation is getting higher precedence because it is at the lower level right and let us say one more r hmm r let me say this is r r and then the this one is r plus r hmm. again it is a b c which means one expression is computing b into c first and the other expression is in the other pass tree is computing this first however we got two pass trees therefore we can say that the grammar is ambiguous okay so all the three grammars are ambiguous grammars